I'm going to start off by making a flat world. It's going to have no hills in it because I'm going to have flying saucers flying around on paths that the Kodu has to shoot and I don't want too many hills in the way that may cause them to bump and crash. That's fine. I'll click and make a Kodu. I'm going to check its height 1.8. So if I now put in a saucer it looks higher than the Kodu. I'll make it a red saucer. I'll escape and I'll right click on it and I'll change its height. Yes it is higher so if I drop that down to 1.8 so that it's at the same height as the Kodu then any missiles that the Kodu fires at it will be at the right height to hit it. Now then, while I'm here, I'll copy that and I'll paste it in three times. I'll change that one to a green one and I'll change that one to a blue one. I'm now going to see what happens when I play and nothing happens because I've not told them to move. I'm going to actually get them to move along paths. I'll have a path around the outside and I want them to follow different paths. So I'll have the red saucer follow a red path. It's on red. I'll make another path this one will go across in a zigzag star shape. I'll make this one green and the green saucer can follow the green path and finally I'll make a blue path for the blue saucer. There we go. I will click back on the Kodu and I'll right click and I'll program it so that when it always moves, it moves on a path which this one was red. I'll check that that red one is moving along the red path and it seems to. So what I can do now is, if I click back on the Kodu and I right click on that one that I've just programmed, if I click on row number one and I copy the row, I've copied that piece of code. I can right click and program, click on the number one, right click paste row and this was the green one. I double click on that and change that to green so the green one follows the green path and I'll right click program click on the number one paste the row in there and this one follows the blue path if I play it now the sources are following their own individual paths I'm going to click on the Kodu, right click, change settings. I'm going to see what the settings are. I'm going to show the hit points and make their hit points 50. Now you get a little health bar across the top of each one of them. I will change its settings, show hit points for that one. Change settings, show hit points for that one. I'll make the red one quite easy to hit. I'll right click on that one, change settings and I will make that one a little bit faster, 1.5. And I'll make the blue one, change settings, I'll make that one 2. So now this one moves quite slowly, that one a little bit faster, the green one and the blue one faster still. If I play it, that's working well. 
If I now click on the Kodu and right click on the Kodu and program him, he's not doing anything yet, so I better make him move. Keyboard, arrows, move. I will make it so that keyboard miscellaneous spacebar will shoot a. I could do blips, but they're quite quick. I could do missiles, they're quite slow. I'll start off with blips and see how they look. Shoot blips in the direction forward so they come straight out from the Kodu. When shot hit, so one of my blips hits a saucer and I'll do the red saucer first then you add a score of one point I'm going to copy that row paste it in click paste it in again and I'm going to double click on the red and change that to green double click on the points and change it to two the green saucer gets two points and the blue saucer which was moving a bit faster gets three points I'll escape and I'll play I can now move and I can fire blips I may change the blips to missiles at some point but I think they're okay at the moment and that's my flying saucer game one player in the next video I'll show you how to change it to two players so that you can have a game against another person.